So I started with a company called Bellcraft 38 years ago. Of course, I started when I was 10. <laughs> Anyways, um, um, I hope you don't mind that I, I did put a camera up. I wanted to record this for YouTube purposes. Um, so our company actually started about, well, before I joined the company, they started about 45 years ago, and they started as a cookware company. This is one of the things that our company started with producing, and it was surgical steel cookware uh, made in the USA, uh, 304 surgical steel with titanium, and it whistles when it's ready, and it's a vacuum system of cooking. I'm not going to talk about the cookware, but that's how we started. And so about 20 years ago, because our expertise was surgical steel, we teamed up with Dalton of England, and most people when they hear the word Dalton, they think fine china, but Dalton has, for the last 190 years has been a world leader in manufacturing water purifiers um, and, and with their expertise over the last 190 years they figured out probably the, the most ingenious way to, to treat water for the least amount of money. So we teamed up with them and we built a surgical steel water purifier with a Dalton cartridge. Uh, we then brought on other health lines of products like we specialize also in air purification, juice extraction, and we also have uh, vacuum food storage containers where you can store your leftovers and your food without air and therefore prevent bacteria growth and everything lasts five times longer. But I'm not here to talk about those products today. I'm here to discuss water and why we need to avoid city treated water. I, I did lose my mother to cancer and I've always believed that we can fight back. And that, of course, is something that most of you are more familiar with than I am, because uh, most of you here are experts in that field. But let me ask you a question. How many here honestly say that they would drink today six to eight glasses of water a day? I know you do. Because <laughs> <laughs> you filled up six to eight glasses in one jug. Okay, so, so, so most of you do, but believe it or not, most people don't. And, um, and, if we, if, and, and the funny thing is, is that people today will treat their cars better than they treat their own bodies. Like if you gave your car an oil change once a week, would you agree that the engine would last a very, very long time? And it's basically, uh, that, that's the thing, we, 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 gotta, we gotta look after ourselves and if, if we drink more water then, then we're gonna be a lot healthier. And that's why I have this little presentation called Drink Water Like Your Life Depends On It, because it does. And the first page talks about why water is so important to our health. They, do, they have called it the most essential nutrient. Uh, the benefits of drinking a lot of water, a lot of people aren't aware of, the, of, of all the health benefits of drinking more water. First of all, it helps us look better by keeping our weight in check. Um, it revitalizes dry skin and lubricates all of our joints. And so you can literally look younger by staying hydrated. Um, it uh, regulates our body temperature, it assists kidneys in eliminating harmful salts and wastes, it carries nutrients and oxygen to all the cells in the body, and it's essential for maintaining good health. The average adult needs 10 to 12 cups of water per day for digestion, perspiration, breathing, and elimination of water. One third of our basic water intake is from the fruits and vegetables we eat, leaving a deficit of at least 6 to 8 cups of water a day which must be added to ensure health and avoid dehydration. So a lot of people aren't aware of this, but drinks containing uh, nutrients such as milk, fruit juices, sugar sweetened drinks, salty tomato based juices all take water from the body to process the nutrients. Coffee, tea, cola drinks and alcoholic beverages are diuretics and promote urination causing even greater loss than the liquid consumed. And I don't know if you ever noticed that when you have a coffee, <laughs> you go to the bathroom real quick. Uh, so what happens if you don't drink enough water? Well, first of all, lack of water is the number one trigger for daytime fatigue. If the amount of water in your body is reduced by 1%, you feel very thirsty and your metabolism slows down. 3% can trigger fuzzy short-term memory, trouble with basic math, and difficulty focusing on printed page, which is almost happening today, so I should have a sip of water here. <laughs> Five percent you have difficulty moving and your muscles, um, moving your muscles or thinking clearly, reducing your ability to work by 20 to 30 percent. At 10 percent loss of body water, you will die. 
So drinking eight glasses of water daily is also said to lower your risk of colon cancer by 45%, breast cancer by 79%, bladder cancer by 50%, and rectal cancer by 38%. Those are pretty astonishing facts, and there's a lot of scientific reasons behind that and the other things that it does, which is like things like flushing out toxins and things. So surveys show that 75% of us North Americans are chronically dehydrated and is reaching epidemic proportions because water is substitute with other liquids that actually increase the body's demand for water. And, you know, like, not necessarily tea, but tea with caffeine would be one, would fall into that category. In 37% in of North Americans, the thirst mechanism is so weak that it is often mistaken for hunger. Hence, we mistakenly snack when we should be drinking water just to satisfy the body's emergency warning signals. So, so, so most people here already knew most of this and are aware of the health benefits of, of drinking enough water. What I found is that it's, it's out of sight, out of mind when it comes to drinking water. If, if I, at home, I leave a glass of water out, usually in the kitchen or in my office or in my, definitely in my bedroom, and by having a glass of water out, it will remind you to have a sip and, and stay hydrated. If you don't, you just forget and you know, have a coffee or have some juice or, you know, but just keeping a glass of water out is, is the trick that I found that works for me. So when it comes to tap water, I, of course, when I heard the city advertising that city water is safe to drink, I decided to take a tour. Hello. Hi. Well, see, lots of seats. Lots of seats. Lots of seats. <laughs> So when I, when I heard them advertising this, I was really curious. So I, I decided to take a tour of the Ottawa treatment plant and find out for myself exactly what went down and what they do. And I was quite surprised. Shock would be more more the word as to what they do to uh, disinfect our water, as it were. And and it varies from area, in different city parts of the city. The water varies in quality. Different townships it varies. Anybody here from Carlton Place? No? But I was there uh, uh, about a month ago servicing a customer, and just for fun she said, well, you should taste this water. Uh, and this was after I, uh, I just replaced her cartridge, and I go, no thank you. <laughs> you can put a gun to my head, I'm not tasting tap water. But she said, well, smell it. So I smelled it, and it was like really, really strong, the chlorine smell. So I, just for fun, I did a chlorine test. And if it was a swimming pool, I would be yelling to the kids to get out. It was higher level of chlorine that would be permitted for a swimming pool. And the guy at the plant, of course, he sees some E. coli in the water or some coliform or crypto, whatever he spotted in the water. And, of course, he doesn't want to be the next guy to get fired like they did in Walkerton, so he just cranks up the poison. That's, their mandate is to disinfect the water. And they do a reasonably good job. I mean, you can't, you can't swim in the Ottawa River, so it's amazing that they can do what they, what they do. After the, uh, the tour, um, it's kind of funny, I, I, I made up a little poem for them. I said, you know, your solution to pollution is dilution. And a cute story, uh, at, at the end of the tour there was these three students standing behind a table with three bottles of water with these Dixie cups in front. And, and the, the bottles were covered so you couldn't see what was in the bottle, but they wanted people to sample the water and write down which one they liked the taste of. So I go up, and I'm still with my tour group, and I which I don't think they'll ever invite me back. <laughs> Anyways, I take a sip of the first glass and I go, hmm, this tastes like uh, spring water. I think it's from Gatineau because it's a little bit, a uh, little tinge of iron in it. So, And the kids are going, what? Nobody's ever guessed what's in the bottle, right? I taste the, se the second one. I go, definitely RO water, but a little bit sweet. So I would say it's probably Dasani because that's re remineralized reverse osmosis water. Now these kids are like, like staring at me like, who is this guy? Nobody's ever guessed what was in the bottle before. I taste the third one. I go, oh, my God, are you crazy? You know, that's tap water. I just took a tour. Oh, my God, you know what's in that? Oh, and you give this to people to put in their mouth? You should have seen these kids' faces. They were, they were white. <laughs> They'll never forget that experience. But, of course, I'm rinsing out my water with the uh, Dasani, my mouth with the Dasani water, trying to get that taste out of my mouth. Because the closer you are to the treatment plant, 
the stronger the, 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 the nasty tastes of the disinfectants that they, they put in the water, of course, right? So let's get into uh, some facts here. Uh, research from federal, provincial, and city departments, as well as scientists and universities across the country and around the world, have declared that the regular use of chlorinated water for extended periods of time leads to disease such as cancer, heart disease, birth defects, and other degenerative disorders. Now, most people don't know this, but chlorine itself, despite all the other thousands of chemicals that are in our, in our water, Chlorine itself doesn't cause cancer. It causes, if anything, heart disease because it scars the, uh, the arteries. It causes a little scarring, and then you get fatty build up, and then you can have heart disease from chlorine. But when chlorine does its job and kills certain types of bacteria, it creates uh, THMs or trihalomethanes, and that is a known carcinogen. I have letters from my wife, who is the, the general, uh, executive general director for Health Canada, and so she sends me some really interesting articles. But yes, the federal government is 100% fully aware of the fact that tap water will give you cancer, but it's the least of the two evils. Either you drop dead tomorrow from waterborne diseases, like cholera and other types of diseases, or, or you drop dead 30 years from now. It's, 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 it is the least of the two evils. And it does make sense. They, they, if, they don't, if they don't treat the water, which they started doing about a hundred, a hundred years ago, then uh, it w uh, we'd be sick all the time. Over the past two decades, we and our society have dumped more chemical waste, sewage, poisons, industrial waste, and drugs into our water sources than any other time in history. Our rivers, lakes, and even our subterranean aquifers that supply our wells and springs have become contaminated by the leaching of pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, nitrates, PCBs, phosphates, dioxins, and other toxic substances. Manure and organic waste has increased bacteria in our water resources, and that's one of the things that caused the trihalomethanes. Scientists have identified over 2,300 chemicals in our water. And uh, I can skip that part there. Our water purification people are fighting an uphill battle. With limited resources, they try to clean up the water as best they can and they do a good job for the short term. Without the chlorine, most of us would be dead in days from waterborne bacteria and viruses. Unfortunately, chlorine reacts, and I think I've talked about this just now, to organic matter in the water that creates trihalomethanes and haloacetates, <laughs> I forgot how to pronounce that, and have been proven to be carcinogenic. Um, e. coli, Gardelambia, fecal coliform, and cryptosporidium are microscopic parasites found in feces of infected Humans and animals often found in the water sources after snow melts or rainstorms and can cause serious intestinal illnesses. Like for example, in, in Milwaukee, uh, a few years back, um, it made our, 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 our Walkerton look like nothing. There, there a hundred people died and 400,000 people were sick. So it went, and that was a, that was a crypto, cryptosporidium outbreak. And I saw a little um, dateline a video like a show on cryptosporidium and it was pretty disgusting. It's a little larvae. It is in the Ottawa River. It's like Russian roulette. If it's only <coughs> one out of one larvae and one out of a thousand liters, will it be in my glass? Will it? Who knows? But it's chlorine resistant and if one is in my glass and, it, and if it hatches in my intestinal tract, millions of these little worms spread all over the place. They're quite disgusting looking on, on, on video anyways. <laughs> and, uh, and a person with a strong immune system would just get sick and think, oh my God, I shouldn't have gone to that restaurant last night, or I shouldn't have had that McDonald's hamburger, <laughs> or whatever. And, and they, they're, they're going to get sick not realizing it was the water. But people with uh, cancer or weak immune systems or the very young and very old, uh, they, will, they will not be able to survive that. And, uh, and I asked the people at the filtration plant, I said, what, what if you could convince taxpayers to cough up an extra $500 a year each so that you could send us some really nice clean water as opposed to just disinfect it. And they said, like, because they, they run it through sand and gravel and they dump in the aluminum sulfate and the sulfuric acid and the chloramines and the fluoride and before the list goes on, it's a, it's a long list of pretty scary stuff. And these barrels have cross and bones on them and they wear masks and stuff and yet they, they're, like I said, they're, their solution to pollution is dilution. It's, it's acceptable limits of these disinfectants. But I asked them, if, what if they could treat the water where it would be really safe to drink, like completely safe to drink? And, they, and she said to me, or he said to me, he said, well, the water will take about, where, he said, where do you live? I said, Orleans. He says, well, the water takes about five weeks to reach you. 
So even if we did disinfect the water, uh, like, like it purified the water, some of these pipes are over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the, some of these <coughs> pipes when they're, when they're doing, uh, dig, digging up and replacing with the newer ones and, and the two or three inches of crud on the inside. And, and, and so, so it w I want those disinfectants in my tap, right up to my tap. I want the wa the, all that stuff in my water right up to my But then it's up to us to decide what we're going to do with it. You know, the way we have to re remove them or not. Uh, yeah, some of, like I mentioned, some of these uh, tests, uh, uh, some of these uh, parasites are chlorine resistant, and that's a scary thing. Uh, current testing of testing methods for cryptosporidium miss about ninety percent of the parasites in the raw water and, the, and in the finished water because they're hard to detect. Ten years ago, statistics showed that one in fifteen would suffer from cancer. Current projections are are one and two within the next ten years, and I don't know if that's accurate or if that's a prediction <coughs> that you folks would would uh, agree with. But it's 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 a scary thought, and and I've always believed that when it comes to fighting cancer, it, you it's just a com a combination of using logic and just being smart about it. You know, just be careful with. Well, I don't have to tell you you folks about that, but you know, you just watch what you eat, watch the comedy channel instead of the news. You drink clean water, breathe clean air, juice a couple of times a week, get some exercise. Just, it's all logic. It's just just using your, your, your head. Anyways, the, um, uh, virtually every day the media reports incidents of pollution and contamination in our municipal water sources. Water quality varies from city to city, street to street, and tap to tap. Water can change from day to day depending on water treatment techniques and controls. If you could see the state of the water pipes from the plant to your home, you would want to disinfect. But you would want the disinfecting power of chlorine in the water right up to your tap. But interesting thing, I have a, a customer who probably just lives off Island Park. He owns Tamarack Home, so he's obviously a very wealthy man, and he probably pays more in taxes than what my mortgage payment is. And I put in a purifier for him, and it clogged in about two, three weeks. And when I say clogged, I mean, here's examples of, of some clogged cartridges. <coughs> and this is the kind of stuff that can trap on the outer surface of cartridge. And, of course, this is washable. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's the stuff that you just wash off. But his cartridge, this might have been one of them, uh, clogged right up and the, the water stopped coming out. And uh, I had to actually put in uh, a whole house treatment system so that is purifier cartridge wouldn't clog so quickly. But you can imagine, like he's paying, like he's got this gigantic home and paying all these taxes, and he's in an area of, of the city where the, well, the water mains are probably so old and corroded and rusted and falling apart that, that his water's almost brown. It's pretty ridiculous when you think about that. Um, so basically, the next page just talks about what your options are. There are some basic options. One is bottled water. It is the fastest growing beverage industry in the world, $22 billion a year with no government regulation standards or controls, which is quite scary. Uh, the Ottawa Citizen, not too long ago, and I've, I've got an article right here, where they did an investigative report, and they say bottled water no cleaner than tap water. I don't, I don't agree with that, of course, but they, they basically say that lack of uh, federal legal standards means no control over bacteria levels. They did a test on a bottled water from a company in Gatineau, and the, the samples of Macro Spring water of Gatineau contained so much bacteria that the scientists who tested them were shocked. And this is the kind of stuff you read about because it's just poorly regulated. And the problem is with bottled water is that there's no, the problem that I find is that there's no disinfectant agents in there, so it can be a breeding ground for bacteria. And, and that's, that's something that people don't realize. And like uh, last year, I took a picture of a stack of bottled water, cases of bottled water at a gas station. And this was, I think it was August, and it was one of the hottest days of the summer. And the sun was just baking on these cases of water. I looked at that, I go, oh my gosh. You know, it's almost about the boiling point. You know, I'm thinking how much vinyl chloride and biphenyl A and p <coughs> and bacteria would be floating around in those bottles. But to be honest with you, I would rather grab one of those bottles, as hot as it is, <laughs> and drink that before I would dra drink anything that came out of a tap, uh, believe it or not. You know, I would still prefer that, because I know this water, even though it's got the plastics and the bacteria, 
all the other chemicals uh, are, are not there anymore. And when they, when they talk about 2300 identified chemicals in our, in our drinking water, the scientists can, they, they know what these different things, they know what herbicides and Prozac and birth control pills that people flush down, the, they know what these things will do to you. What they don't know and what they don't have the resources to figure out is the synergistic effect of all these chemicals and what the mixes of these chemicals are going to do to us eventually. That's a scary thought. There's a really interesting uh, documentary called TAPPED, oh. T-A-P-P-E-D. It's about the, uh, the bottled water industry. If, if, if you guys haven't seen it, it's really worth a watch. Mm. It'll open your eyes. It's nice. Amazing. Yeah. And apparently, like Dasani, is, you actually pay about $6 a gallon for Dasani water. Yes. It's more expensive than gasoline. Oh, yeah, it's very expensive. Bottled water is really, yeah. It's very interesting. They talk about the chemicals and they talk about the waste and the pollution, and and, and actually the effect on um, the effect and the long term projected effects on the supply of fresh water on the planet actually is quite astounding. Mm. Um, and uh, you know the the the, um, the lack of regulation and, and companies like Nestle and Coca Cola that come into communities and communities that are experiencing experiencing a drought. The, the Nestle water truck is still going, yeah. and they're in, a, in the middle Sell of the drought. Sell it back to them. Sell it back to them. They yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, anyways, yeah, yeah, very interesting documentary. Another, I saw a customer a few months ago, and she, she, was, she told me she was, went to on a trip to India, and uh, they, they, they took a lot of back roads. Like, these are real interesting travelers uh, that live in Ottawa here. And she said she, she, would, uh, she would see cows walking along the side of the street through the ditches, wading through... Bottle, empty bottles of water mm -hmm. up to their knee high, mm -hmm. like the, it, it's 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 really doing a number on mm -hmm. the on the on the planet. All these empty bottles, mm -hmm. it's also expensive uh, mm -hmm. compared to other filtered uh, water, filtered water. Ninety nine percent of the cost is the bottle, the label, the transportation, advertising, and profit. And the large bottles and multi packs are heavy and inconvenient to carry. I just had a thought last night when I was just putting together some notes for this. I thought. You can, can you imagine my wife coming home with 80 one jug bottles of, of filtered water, carrying this all home, filling up the whole front hall with 80 one gallon jugs of, of water, and then coming home uh, after work and, and, and seeing all those jugs empty? And said, What happened? And I said, Well, I had to clean the fish tank. I have an 80 gallon fish tank. What am I going to do? I'm going to give them tap water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so heavy and inconvenient. People will not use it for washing their vegetables, their fish tank, their plants, uh, cooking, uh, coffee, tea, juices. They're they're, they're gonna bu they're buying this bottle. They gotta carry it home. They're gonna use it strictly for drinking, which is ridiculous because you know this should be used for everything, including cooking. Um, no disinfectant <coughs> agents in, like, like chlorine to prevent bacteria buildup. We talked about that, and and you do and sometimes these things are stored in hot warehouses, hot trucks, and like I said, laid out in the grocery stores even sometimes for the convenience of their their shoppers leave the those big jugs by the front, mm -hmm. and I see sun shining in on it. You give the bottle a little shake, and you actually see little waves sometimes, which are nests of bacteria that are forming already in these big jugs. You know, it's, 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 you keep it dark, keep it in the dark, keep it cold. Mm -hmm. The water won't stay fresh for a long time, but they don't do that. They leave it out in front. Prolonged storage leads to leaching of trace toxic chemicals from the bottle into the water, phylate, vinyl chloride, other things. Despite, oh, I can skip that, 1.5 million tons of plastic is used to bottle water every year. And, and I've read some pretty scary articles about what that's slowly doing to our environment. Toxic chemicals released into the environment through the manufacturing and disposal recycling of the plastic bottles. So it's, 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 it is one option, but it's not the best option. Small pitcher or faucet mounted filters, they're very inexpensive to buy. <coughs> A small gravity filter, while able to remove unpleasant tastes and odors, is not effective at removing the removal of heavy duty pollutants such as harmful bacteria, toxic chemicals, and heavy metals. A quote right from the Brita water filter packaging. I, I kind of blew it up so that you could, people could read it. It says inside the cartridge replacement box, it says word for word, caution, the Brita water filter is not intended to purify water. And that's right in, in the packaging. So the uh, reduced chlorine gives the impression that water is clean, but it is not. 
Even in Germany, they've passed a ban on Brita water filters to advertise its product for anything but for watering plants because of too many false claims that it's purified water. A quote from the City of Water, uh, 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 the City of Ottawa Water Purification website, they say the presence of organic nutrients and carbon filters can promote bacteria growth as quickly as overnight. Uh, there's nothing in a carbon filter of any kind, whether it's a GAC or a carbon block, that some people will use. There's nothing that could prevent bacteria growth inside those. The Water Works Association has described small cartridges, uh, cartridge units in a pitcher that atta or attached to the top is totally useless because of their size and brief exposure time. As a matter of fact, when I went and installed <coughs> a, a system at Sarah's place, she had one of those $500 Britas. <laughs> I don't know what you paid for yours, yeah. but yeah. Uh, it's 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 a very it's it's a very, it's like a big it's a gravity filter with a, a little more elaborate more more levels and 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 more meaty in the cartridge. And uh, so if you have a nice kitchen, you don't want this great big thing on your kitchen. It's nicer to have a a little faucet installed. So I did that. But after we were done, just for fun, we did a a pH test because they advertised that this was a thing that made the water very alkaline. And we were both quite shocked to find out that the pH of our $500 extravagant Brita type system uh, had a pH of around 6. And then we tested the pH level in our purified water and it was about 8, so which was about 20 times less acidic than, the, uh, than her alkaline system. Um, then you get the, the, the uh, reverse osmosis systems. They, that gives you the cleanest possible water you can get. But it's too clean. It was originally invented for the film processing industry. It was never intended for drinking water. Because um, in the film process, I think you need water completely devoid of all dissolved minerals and dissolved solids. Otherwise, you're going to get some pretty fuzzy pictures. But somebody had the bright idea to start making small, <coughs> small units for, for the home. It does not kill or remove all bacteria. It produces pure water that is flat and tasteless because it removes all the natural healthy minerals. It wastes about eight gallons to produce one gallon of purified water. So every liter of water that you purify, eight liters goes down your drain. So it is a bit wasteful. Very slow process, taking hours for one glass of water, which is why you need a holding tank, which is subject to bacteria contamination. Chlorine and hot water adversely affect the RO membrane. The RO membrane can rupture without any indication, allowing unfiltered water through to your stored water. So if your RO membrane, unless you get one of those really fancy, expensive ones with the computer monitor that monitors the, the water, uh, there's no way of knowing if your RO membrane has ruptured or not. Um, they're large and bulky. They will take up half the space under your sink. Uh, they're expensive to maintain and susceptible to metal, metal deterioration. In other words, your faucet will start leaking at a certain point because the water that comes out of an RO, an RO system is very acidic. Um, and, of course, the high initial capital cost. Now, our company does have a 7 and a 15 stage remineralizing reverse osmosis system, which is quite nice for people who have salt softeners. That's the only solution because you need something that removes the, the sodium salts if they're having a salt softener. So I had this built for me. And, uh, and, it, and it basically is the only way to have water that is alkaline and still pure. But again, you have all the disadvantages still come with it. It still takes up half the sink under your sink. It's still a little bit wasteful. Uh, there's still six cartridges to replace instead of one. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. But we do sell it for about 75% less than our competition. So that's another nice positive thing. Then you get distilled water. Uh, it removes healthy minerals, producing water with a flat taste. It's expensive to maintain because you're boiling water all day long to produce your, your, your clean water. Holding tank is subject to bacteria contamination. Um, Many pollutants are not removed. I did a test about 36 years ago where I would I took some wa water, I brought it to a boil, I put in some food coloring. I don't know if it was red or blue, but I know it was some colored food coloring. I held a slice of white bread in the steam, and within seconds, the bread was blue. Which proved to me that when that contaminants and chemicals travel with vapor. So the only thing left behind when you're distilling water is the stuff you don't want to have out of, taken out of your water, which is the calcium and magnesium and the minerals. So it's, it's a, to me, it's a, the, the whole concept of distilled water is a joke. Um, typically not effective at removing or, organic compounds such as pesticides and trihalomethanes. 
uh, and of course again a high initial capital cost. Then you get into granular activated carbon filters, as I refer to them as GACs. They will not remove harmful bacteria or heavy metals from the water. It does not uh, require a holding tank, <coughs> but filtered water can become a breeding ground for bacteria re for requiring regular filter replacements. Most units are sealed and not cleanable, so again, hard on the environment, you're throwing the whole thing out because there's no replaceable cartridge. Granular carbon permits the water under pressure to forge channels. I call that uh, channeling, where the water will eventually push through the, uh, the carbon bed and create little rivers, as it were, in, in the carbon bed and have not have the full contact with the media and not be, be as effective. There's no pre-filter to prevent premature clogging of the filter and leaching can occur from the plastic housing into the filter. Um, so, I have one question about the granular yeah. um, systems. If you take cartridge and shake it, does that, because that will get rid of the channels. That will get rid of the channels, but, but. <laughs> I don't want to drink it, though. No, okay. Because <laughs> you're shaking up and loosening up a lot of stuff that was, that's in it. Uh, that's why, that's why shower filters are, are it's good to, good to, especially good to do that with a shower filter. If you mm -hmm. reverse the cartridge um, every few months, then you'll prevent the, uh, the channeling. And, uh, but you will notice the, when, when, you, when you first turn it on, the water will be brown because hmm. a lot of stuff breaks loose and gets, you know, and, and that's not something you're going to be drinking anyways if it's shower water, right? So, so you know. But, uh, so basically, according to a quote from the Alive Health magazine in an article comparing all the water filtration methods, actually I have it right here. They talk about all the different methods. This is the article from the Alive magazine. It says at the end of the article, after they talk about distillers and Britas and everything else, they say the best kind of water filter to buy would be an activated carbon block filter with a sediment pre-filter, a fine membrane to remove bacteria and parasites, and an automatic shutoff point when the filter has outlived its usefulness. They don't mention any company names, but they do describe the system that we have 2AT. Um, so what we have basically, uh, what we put in our housings, like we, we build these ourselves, these are actually built right here in Ottawa, and every component of our water purifiers are Canadian and American made. Yeah, feel the wave on. Solid. Pretty solid, eh? Anyway, so we build these ourselves and we use all, we, no, nothing from, uh, from the Orient. Everything is Canadian and American uh, and lead-free brass uh, fittings and ice maker flex hoses. We don't use the plastic tubes and things like that. So we, we, were, we take a lot of pride in, in putting these together and making them not only extremely affordable, very inexpensive, but also designed to last a lifetime, which is nice. So basically the, uh, the, the cartridge removes the harmful bacteria, the parasites, the viruses, including Guardia, Lambia, cysts, Cryptosporidium, E. coli, fecal coliforms, hepatitis B, and salmonella. All these contaminants literally trap on the outer surface of the washable ceramic and then die. Because the, the, the Dalton discovered that with their 190 years of trial and error and figuring out what works and what doesn't work, that if they impregnate porcelain with the silver nitrate to kill and prevent bacteria growth, that it doesn't leach out. When they put that in a carbon filter, carbon won't hold it. It will leach out. And then not only do you consume the silver, which is not great, but then you, you, your bacteria can start forming in, in inside your unit. <coughs> so um, it removes toxic chemicals, inclu uh, uh, including dioxins, arsenic, asbestos, benzenes, nitrates, PCBs, and hundreds more. It removes heavy metals, including lead, mercury, aluminum, iron, copper, zinc, magnesium, and silver, over 98%. And that's an, a, a nice feature of, of this uh, purifiers that it will take out everything I want removed from the water but still allow the free flow of the calcium and the minerals in the water to keep it perfectly pH neutral and tasty. It removes carcinogenic uh, chlorination byproducts like trilomethanes. It provides safe drinking water at boil, alert, boil water alerts or breakdowns in the city purification system. Um, it wa has a washable submicron porcelain pre-filter preventing the clogging of the cartridge and thereby extending its effective life. What's nice about the washable pre-filter is that the, if you, I've broken open cartridges, like if you saw what this would look like when it was wet, it was very black, and here I scratched it so you can see that it's still white underneath. 
But when I break open a, an old dirty cartridge after replacing a cartridge for a customer um, that didn't bother cleaning it, <laughs> um, it's always white inside. And the carbon block on the inside of the cartridge is always clean. So in other words, there is no bacteria growth or, or guck or things that can clog the carbon. You always get a nice clean flow. The, the genius thing about a washable cartridge <coughs> is that when the flow rate slows down, like here for example in this purifier, obviously the cartridge is still clean. You don't need to clean it. It's a beautiful flow rate. But when the water flow slows down to like this, it's the cartridge's way of saying, I'm full of crap, no pun intended, time to clean me. And then you just open <coughs> it up. That happened upstairs and the cartridge was bright orange. Yes, it was pretty bad. I think, yeah, I don't know if this was yours, but it was, it bright was really... Orange? White orange? Yeah, the c color of this couch. Because the bacterial rust? I thought it was rust. rust. I don't know. Rust. I have people that have to clean their, I have a lady that lives in the Glebe and she has to wash her cartridge once a month and I have a customer that lives about six blocks away from her, not even six blocks away from her, and two years later I look, I replace her cartridge and it's, and it's white. So it, it just depends on, on the, the, the pipes. pipes leading to your, to your house, it's, 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 there's so much, so many variables there. So if you were meticulous about maintaining the pre-filter, could it last indefinitely? No. Because the, 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 the stuff inside is absorbing the, the chemicals. Okay. Okay. So it, it lasts, a, you know, the small ones last about a year, the large ones last about two years. Okay. And because it's, you know, it's absorbing the heavy metals and, and uh, all the chemicals as well. Uh, what, what you're washing away is just the, 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 t, the t TDS, the total dissolved solids and the, and the iron and the, the larger particles. Anything larger than 0 0.3 microns trap on the outer surface of the porcelain. So that's the pre-filter that you're showing? Yeah, the, the porcelain is washable, is the pre-filter. And inside this, like if I busted it open, which I could do, is, is, the, uh, is the, uh, the other stages, like the carbon block oh, and I the see. ion exchange resin for the heavy metals. So, but so the it's all together. It's all together. So it's four stages of one cartridge. Oh. And, and what I love about, about that is that, is that the, the, the porcelain pre-filter on its own is a better filter than what, what you more normally buy in a store because it filters the 0.3 microns, whereas most filters you buy at the hardware store is 5 microns. And there's a lot of chemicals in that, in this, in that difference of size <coughs> that will sneak through, including, including the uh, parasites, right? Um, so stage four is a solid carbon block which is so compressed that it has the equivalent of over over a hundred thousand cubic yards of filtering media. So you, fix, you you picture a football field as high as it is wide with sand and gravel, and which is more than what the city uses for everybody, and you've got that under your sink. So it's, it's the pores are, are so incredibly fine in, the, in this very compressed carbon block. Um, the porcelain ceramic pre-filters I mentioned that's impregnated with silver which renders the surface bacteria static, killing any bacteria and preventing it from contaminating the filter cartridge on the inside. The silver impregnation, impregnation is stable, unlike silver impregnated granular carbon from which the silver soon leaches out and enters into your drinking water and body. Uh, the ceramic pre-filter also acts as an automatic shutoff point by slowing the water down to tell you it's indicated, or if, if you wash the cartridge and the flow rate doesn't return, then it's the cartridge's way of saying, I'm, I'm done. You've got to replace me. And that's happened. I've, I've had a customer move, and I, her number was disconnected. I have no idea where she moved. And she literally called me uh, like three years later and said, hey, I washed my cartridge, and you know, no water's still coming out of it. I said, well, hello. <laughs> Time to replace your cartridge. She didn't know she had to, even though I had told her. Uh, the ceramic pre-filter, okay, I, meant, I read that. Because of the healthy minerals that, are, that remain, the water has a sweet, delicious, and energetic taste. So unlike distilled water or reverse osmosis water, which is tasteless and bland, this actually tastes a little sweet because the minerals aren't removed, which is nice. Surgical steel filter housing is built to last a lifetime. It's easy to clean and maintain. And it comes with a, we, I put a 50-year warranty on, on these units. And if you feel, feel the weight, that's empty, by the way. So you can imagine how heavy it was if, if the cartridge was in there. Uh, also, installation and required service of the filter is provided for free. So there's a lot of people on, 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 a, on a tight budget. They don't have a lot of money. And, and if, if somebody can actually come to their home and hook up a water purifier for as little as $299, 
no strings, no insulation, no service call fees, nothing like that. That 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 fits everybody's budget. For two hundred ninety nine dollars, and that's it. That's it. That's that that's 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 well, unless you get the surgical steel one, they're, they're more expensive. But no, but that's that that includes changing yeah. it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Two ninety nine. I I I we we install it. We hook it up. Um, if they want if they want an under counter with a a nice looking faucet, of course it's a wee bit more. But but we we don't. We don't, we're, we're a zero overhead company. We don't advertise. We have no overhead. We've always been factory direct. So we don't have the markup that so many other companies have <coughs> and why they have to charge ridiculous prices for water systems. So, yeah. The, uh, in the city of Ottawa, it's not chlorine, it's chlorine. So does Both. that system remove it? Both. It, it's, it's, what they put in is, in, right after they put in the aluminum sulfate, to help coagulate the chunks to the bottom, then they they shock it with high doses of chlorine. As it's traveling through these pipes, they just inject it with chlorine to kill the bacteria, and then they do go through other treatment processes after the uh, they like the, the screening processes and things like that. Then before they send it out, because chlorine evaporates so quickly, they inject it with chloramine because it's a chlorine ammonia mix and it doesn't evaporate as quickly. And that's why they put in the chloramine. Not all cities put in chloramine, um, but but yeah, they, they in Ottawa they do use chloramine uh, so that when, by the time, like I said, it takes. They told me it takes it takes three weeks to, for the water to reach my house. That you know. So that, it's a more stable compound, exactly. and then the, which means that they have to use less chlorine in order. So that's why they use chloramine. But would this system remove chloramine or just yes. chlorine? Yes. Yes, so they, they did testing on it, or what? Yeah. Or how would do we know that it does remove it? Because because it's they, they, they build <laughs> the cartridges to remove it. It's designed for that. You, you know? obviously test your water. Did, yeah. Is it ever tested oh, yeah. on chloramine, like oh, yeah. before and after? This is, this this is, these cartridges have gone through more testing than anything in any other testing in the world. FDA, NSA, Water Safety Association, uh, um, and in different parts of the world. This is Dalton of England. They, they sell over 100 million filters a year in 188 different countries. So, so they, 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 they're not just newbies in, in, in this industry. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons I, I deal with, with this company is because when I fought, bought my first purifier, going back when you were just a little girl, I, I, uh, I bought, went to Canadian Tire and I bought a system and it was about 200, I remember it was $265, which was a lot of money for a young lad in those days. And I went back a year later to get a cartridge replacement, and they said, oh, we don't carry that anymore. We have no idea where you would get a cartridge for that. And that really freaked me out, because I, you know, that was a lot of money for me, 265 bucks then. That was like a whole week's salary. Anyway, so, uh, if not more. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, the second water purifier I bought, the same thing. I couldn't get the cartridge for it. So I decided at that point that if I ever got into the water industry, I would never have that problem for myself or my customers. And with a company that sells over 100 million of these cartridges a year, they're not going to all of a sudden say, oh, we're not going to make these anymore. You know, we're going to stop selling these. <laughs> they're going to be around. Actually, I had the problem with the reverse osmosis filters that we had in Chelsea. We could not find the replacement filters anywhere. We went out to cart to get them. It was really bizarre. Yeah. It was very mm. strange. Mm. That was because it was it had probably a dedicated type of cartridge, yeah, not the standard cartridge. There was no standard cartridge. For yeah. It. <laughs> and what about fluoride? Does it remove fluoride or it cleans well, it? In that, that's a good question. Fluoride uh, is the one thing it doesn't completely remove, and the only way you could do that is with a dual system. In other words, we have um, like the one that down there is we have a white one, which is a lot less expensive than the surgical steel one, and you get you need two of them. One with a dedicated fluoride cartridge and one with the four-stage washable ceramic. Because remember I said that these cartridges are designed to allow the free flow of dissolved minerals? Well, that's the problem. Fluoride is a dissolved mineral. And so it will sneak through. Do you have so, any sell that at Grassroots, the double one? I don't know if we still have the same one. I remember before I moved on, I called them and they said you had to do the two for oh, okay. fluoride. Okay. Yeah, so we need a couple of boxes to get yeah, fluoride, fluoride's tricky. Not all cities use fluoride. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure fluoride will be banned from Ottawa Water. I have a customer who's very aggressively working on, on that, getting fluoride banned. You just That's put it luck. in in Quebec. It was not in, in Quebec, in Gatineau, and they just put it in. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But there were all people who were upset about it, so it's kind too, of... too many people having the, the drink in the beer, <coughs> and, uh, not thinking about fighting the city about it, and next thing you know, they, they just snuck it in there. And it's, just, and it's a horrible people thing. People love it, are you kidding? Well, people are all about fluoride in the water. And just stuff. for the teeth, but the I rest know, is not good. So it's so that's about it. Yeah. It's Even hard for to get people, people to stop. stop. It was a brilliant concept <laughs> back in the 60s when we were shoving bottles of of, of Kool-Aid into our baby's mouths and rotting out their teeth. It was So fluoride was a good idea in those days, but now it's in our toothpaste. You really don't need to force adults to drink that horrible poison. So, so But but because it is absolved mineral, it is hard to remove fluoride without a dedicated cartridge. There's only two ways to successfully remove fluoride. One is with reverse osmosis treatment or with a dedicated fluoride cartridge. So and you this have, one would remove all my percentage of it. The yeah, so, so basically you would have one of these. There's two of them together. They're on a, on a bracket, so they're mounted together on, on a nice uh, bracket okay. together. And the one cartridge will remove the fluoride. The second cartridge is the four-stage washable ceramic to take out everything else. What about, um, I, I don't live here in Ottawa. I live like part-time, but I live in Picton, Ontario, and I have a well. Yes. I have a dug well. Yeah. And so I have a UV filter and I Good. have a carbon filter, which is required by law. Um, really? The law have, tells you that you have to have a filter? To, because, I, I, uh, because I'm a small drinking water operator, Okay. I, that's a requirement because I have my practice where I live. Anyways, no, um, so be. what about what about using this on well water? I mean, I test my well water once a month, and I don't used, ever have any problem. The four-stage ceramic is uh, used on people drinking right out of the Ottawa River, right out of lakes. It's perfect for any water. But would it's it make ideal. a difference? Is, I guess is my question. Because, well, yeah, because my well water, water tastes really good. Oh, of course. But well water is not what it was 50 to 100 years ago. I mean, there's so many things that contaminate our groundwater today in our aquifers, like... The, the, the list goes on, like the, like an oil truck spilling into the Ottawa River a few years back up near Perth or Petawawa. I mean, that who knows what that did for the water for who knows how long. I mean, there's so many things. Deep River, you know, the the, the, the nuclear plant. I mean, you, well, groundwater, I mean, a gas station 50 kilometers away, mm -hmm. if one liter of, of gasoline got into the ground, they say something like 500,000 liters of water can be contaminated. contaminated. So, so I, I, if you can't drink rain, what makes you think that you can drink water that's been filtered by dirt, rock, and sand? And, and with all the runoffs and the, all the farming that's been going on in the, in, in the communities, uh, when, you, when, you have a, when you purify well water, you're going to have the best possible water because it's rich in nutrients, it's rich in minerals, and if you can take out the p potential critter, uh, that, did, that's, that didn't get killed by your UV light. I mean, when was the last time you washed the quartz sleeve of your UV light, for example? About so, a year ago. Yeah, oh, well, that's, that's good. Most people don't even know they have to wash the quartz sleeve of their UV light. So, and, and then, of course, it makes it ineffective and, uh, and not doing the, the proper job. So having a, a purifier like this that will take out all the chemicals and 100% and of all the, the critters and the ones that might survive the UV light um, it's just it's just an insurance. It's just peace of mind and insurance. Well, I'm wondering just because I'm required to test once a month now. I used to have to do it once a week. Oh, once a week. Huh? I had to test once a week. Once a week. Yeah, until oh. the, because it's a new system. Okay. Until they until they establish a pattern, and now I'm now I'm at once a month where I have to do a water test and send it to the. Well, what are you testing? You collect coli for that's it. Yeah, but what about the other 2,300 things yeah. that are in the water? Just <laughs> where where do you start? Yeah. Where do you finish, you know? I just wonder if it would make that much of a difference in my drink. It would definitely make a difference. And, there, okay. and, there's, and there's, no, there's nothing wrong with the insurance knowing that... Like, if you, like I said, if you purify well water, you've got the yummiest, best water. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no question about that. Okay. You know? So, just to wrap this up, I, I, I do appreciate <coughs> you guys coming. Um, let's see if there's anything here that I want to advertise. Ron, yes. if we were to, uh, I know Dougal's curious about the, the testing, especially for the heavy metals, because we, you know, we're interested in that with our patients too, we um, look into that. So is there any way of, of uh, contacting Dalton or someone and seeing if they have any... You all, know. all that information is right on my website, but oh, I'd, be, I'd be happy to fine. email you that. Okay. Oh, yeah, percentage and all the facts yeah, and all yeah, the yeah. accreditations okay. and all the places, okay, that all the lab reports. Yeah. And it's, it's all there. I have personally, even with me, many, um, many different uh, lab reports from people who had their water uh, tested, and okay. then they put in our purifier, and 
And had it tested again. It okay. always comes back zero zero. And so they had E. coli coliform. They run it through the filter. It's always zero zero. Uh, when it comes to the heavy metals, it says right on the cartridge box that it removes over 98% of all the heavy metals. And they can't put that on their box if, 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 if it's not a fact yeah, because yeah. they're just too big. And is it a system that goes under the sink or you can yes. have the one that goes at the beginning of the house? All the, oh, we have whole house systems. Okay. What's um, the cost of a typical whole house system? A whole house system is, is typically around $1,200. Uh, that includes installation. Um, it's built like a tank. It'll, it'll last a lifetime. Where would it go in your house if it's full? Where the water comes in. Where your water meter is, you have to you have to get it right where it comes in because if, you got to get it before a split off. So that means it would like your shower water would be clean. Yes. And, like, mm -hmm. Most people get a shower filter because it's a lot more affordable, and a shower filter is a no-brainer. I I have a, cus a customer who's a naturopath. You probably know Ann Lawrence from yeah. Dragonfly. You know, she's and, in and, yeah, in Canada. She's been a customer of mine for many, many, many years. She has all of our products, including our air filter and stuff. And she has a, she has the water purifier, and and she said to me many years ago, she said a, a ten minute shower is the equivalent of drinking four liters of city tap water, as far as the amount of chemicals you absorb from your through your skin and from breathing in the uh, the, the, the vapors. And when I heard that, I thought, what? <laughs> every morning I'm drinking purified water, but every morning it's like my drinking four liters of tap water as far as the chemicals are concerned. So it was for me a shower filter was a no-brainer, but it, it is less. A whole house system is more convenient because you get you do get better filtration than you can from a shower filter because you got a cartridge this big versus one this big. Um, you're, you, when you flush the toilet, you won't have to breathe in the chlorine vapors. Uh, your laundry won't be absorbing all the chemicals into your clothing. Uh, there's a lot of benefits of, of, of a whole house system. Plus, your water purifier cartridge isn't going to turn like this. It's going to stay white and it's going and will last twice as long. Why would it stay white instead of? Because you're you're now purifying filtered water. 